Blessings, friends. This is Bishop Andre Woods, and I'm excited to have this privilege to share with you tonight. And we are excited about uh, this inaugural broadcast because what we're doing is we are extending an invitation to the Body of Christ ministry leaders. Uh, we were calling this day a uh, very special day, August uh, 15th, the year 2022. Uh, just laid it upon my heart uh, to start uh, sharing across the country and around the globe, networking the kingdom. And the uh, reason why I want to do this is because I've been so tremendously blessed meeting great men and women of God from around the country by the means of technology, social media, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and, and Instagram. It's such a wonderful tool if we use it to the glory of God. Now, I don't know what everybody else is doing, but I thank God that it has been a blessing for his ministry to me and to meet so many great men and women of God in the body of Christ who are doing ministry effectively in the spirit of excellence and certainly doing what the word of God said. When Jesus said, I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So let me first, by starting off and applauding and thanking and giving God the thanks for the ministry gifts that are out here, really doing ministry and excellence, and also a true representation of what ministry should be to the world. And uh, it's so exciting because uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm looking at as I uh, do my daily research on what's happening in the world it's a blessing to be able to look at the church and those who are serious about ministry and how they are not compromising, how they are standing their ground and standing on the word of God and not only just being um, preachers and uh, uh, orators and uh, hearing the word of God and a voice crying out in this wilderness of the world, but uh, thank God for they being lights and being the ones who are the salt of the earth in this hour, who are not just talking it, but they're living what they preach and teach. Thank God for you, man of God. Thank God for you, woman of God. Now, uh, we, we want to start networking. Um, I believe, and I know you believe the word of God, where John says in the 17th chapter, Jesus uh, spoke the words, Father, make them one as you and I are one. And we know that there's only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. So we give God glory and praise for that. And um, you and I are in such a pivotal position in history, especially when it comes to the Lord's Church, how we can play a significant part in just doing our part as we teach, as we preach, uh, we prayerfully reach those who need to hear a life-giving word on a daily basis now where we have this wonderful tool and uh, we can go out uh, from our homes, from our offices, from our edifices, from our churches, where we can do ministry, really if we want to, 24-7, where it can be broadcast and shared. Thank God for this privilege. My prayer is that we will use it wisely, and we won't do what Paul tells them in Corinthians. Don't use the word of God deceitfully and with cunning craftiness, but just preach the word, preach Jesus. Yes, that, that's what we, we don't preach ourselves, but we preach Jesus, you know. And so uh, I wanted to do something, do just do my little part, you know. I, that's all I can do is uh, my part to reach out and uh, network 
And I'm, I'm doing that with some of my programming. Uh, I'm reaching out to great men and women of God, inviting them. Like, for instance, uh, my program that I use on Saturday nights now. We used to do it on Sundays, but we're on Saturdays at 6 p.m. This Saturday, we'll be there at 6 p.m. with Apostle uh, Crystal Lee, great woman of God. And uh, it's on This Is My Story. And we share uh, the story of those in ministry or whatever their story might be. We've had business people on. We've had uh, career uh, business entrepreneurs and uh, blue collar workers uh, and just everybody uh, from all walks of life. We had them on with their story about their journey. And so we use that as a uh, ministry tool to encourage and also uh, to share testimony on the grace and the mercy and goodness of God. So uh, always join us at 6 p.m. if you're available uh, right here on Bishop Andreas Wood's Facebook page. I'd be happy to have you to be my guest and to share uh, with us in this time of of ministry as we share on a weekly basis and uh, we don't program a whole lot of stuff we just go in and do ministry and thank God for that privilege because uh, we want it to be authentic and we want to share uh, the real story of those who come on and and willing to uh, allow us to question them and to probe into their their past and bring us from then to uh, the present. So it's been a blessing and I've had the privilege to uh, uh, interview so many great men and women of God that I met via Facebook and I've had the privilege to share on other platforms because of Facebook. So I am certainly grateful and thanking God for all of you. And we've begun the, the network uh, in the kingdom in our own little way. And uh, we certainly want to continue to share uh, the networking process with those that uh, we haven't met yet. I see so many great men and women of God and sometimes I go on and just check out their worship experiences, their teaching time during the week, and uh, come to find out they're checking me out while I'm checking them out. So I praise God for that. And uh, we're about creating covenant relationship. Iron sharpeneth iron. Let me tell you that. It's very important for us to understand that. And we all need one another. Bottom line. Bottom line, we're all in, in this thing together. That, that, that is where I'm coming from. I'm coming from a place of sharing and helping people to understand none of us have a monopoly on the Holy Spirit. Oh, we have what we have. We're gifted, we're anointed, we're talented, and all these different things, and God has so graciously allowed by his Holy Spirit for us to be prophets and apostles and, and all of that, the bishops and everybody that function now in not only the fivefold ministry, but the ministry of helps and ministrations under the auspices of the Holy Ghost. So I'm excited about that just alone itself, <coughs> excuse me, that we might have this privilege also to share and to network. This past Sunday, I had the opportunity to network and team teach with one of the pastors here uh, in the Detroit area, Pastor Benjamin Barnes of In His Presence Ministries Worldwide. And we shared the platform on a passage of scripture. And we'll be doing more of that. We, we, we're talking about doing panels. And uh, there are so many that are doing uh, all kinds of important panel discussions where there are ministry gifts and people on these panels that are sharing 
valuable, priceless information from their experience and from the word of God. And so we thank God for all of these outlets and the programming is just so wonderful. And I'm excited about it for this reason also. You know, when you read the news and uh, you watch the news telecast and even on Facebook, when you, when you are caught up on the news uh, online, is so much going on that's negative. And then in a lot of cases, uh, the only time you, you hear or see of the church being highlighted or mentioned is when it's something negative. And uh, that is just not the case, people of God. You know, there are some positive uh, ministries. There are some great men and women of God who are honest, who are walking in integrity, who are trustworthy, and their ministries are legitimate, okay? They're, they're not embezzlers, they're not thieves, they're not homemongers, huh? They're, they're not causing confusion, they're not scattering the sheep, they're not guilty of any of those things. They're just trying to do ministry as God has prescribed in his word. And uh, I thank God for that. And those are the ones that, that may, may not have uh, the platform or the name. You know, we in our culture, we, we've made everything about uh, personality and popularity. And uh, a lot of times we don't check content and we don't check motive. Uh, that's because we don't pray for discernment uh, a lot of times. So we're caught up in um, notoriety. We're caught up in numbers. We're, we're caught up in platforms. We're caught up in algorithms and all of this other stuff that we get caught up in um, since we've been in this pandemic and, and Facebook have been our main communication and YouTube and other venues. Uh, so uh, there it is. Here we are. Uh, in today's world, and we are living out Bible prophecy. The day is here when men are not wanting to endure or to be uh, subject to sound doctrine, but they're, they're, they're running here, there, to and fro, uh, heaping teachers because of their itching ears. They, they want to hear stories and fable. Uh, Preaching the whole counsel of God is not palatable to them anymore. You know, it's it's not inviting. It's it it's not it's not uh, uh, where they make them feel comfortable. They they don't like it. They don't they don't want to hear fine brimstone as they call it. You know, when it's just simply the word of God. And uh, thank God for all of uh, those who have been faithful to the call and to the charge that. We preach the whole Bible, the whole counsel of God. You know, 2 Timothy 3 says that, that all scripture, A-L-L, -L, that little three-letter word makes the difference now. All scripture, that means every book in the Bible, every verse, and every chapter. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and it is profitable for reproof, for instruction, for correction that we might be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So uh, if that being the case, and we believe that, uh, we know that we're not to just go in and, and decipher and pick out what was going to make us feel good for today. But we need uh, the word of God to keep us in line, to instruct us, to correct us, to reprove us if necessary, even to rebuke us if necessary. So praise God for our pastors who are standing as men and women of God with integrity in the word that they're not cheating themselves or their people out of the whole truth of the Bible, but they are uh, really given revelation and information that brings revelation that we pray will 
breed and birth transformation. I grew up in a day when uh, we used to see conversion in the church. Saints were getting converted. They were they were walking out of sin. They were laying it on the altar. They were they were being totally delivered in a worship experience. And so, my friends, uh, it's for this cause that we pray every day uh, that God will keep His angels uh, a watch around our servants, those who serve well, those who decided that for God I live and for God I die. You know, i rather obey God than man. Uh, and so we, we, we really uh, applaud. We don't, we don't worship anybody, but we give honor to whom honors do. And, and uh, I'm saying this because there's, there's so much corruption even in the church, there's so much corruption in the world that affects the church uh, directly and indirectly. And so either way, uh, the devil has devised a scheme and a plan uh, to alter the course of the destiny of people who are walking in faith and believing in the word of God, believing the Bible, uh, and uh, so that's why today is like an inaugural day where we, once a month, we're going to be just jumping on and whoever comes on, whatever, we're going to network. I'm already in talks with, though there's some programs going on now, and we might do it a different day because we want to include great men and women of God that we know. And again, it's because of Facebook that I have, I have gain all oh, some some new brothers and sisters in the Lord you know and thank God for that I, I I've met uh, some seasoned saints who really are sold out for the cause of Christ and it's so encouraging and it's such a blessing you know uh, because in my personal case I started looking around and all of my mentors are gone you know uh, the men and women of God who would uh, counsel me. I, I got one left, and that's my apostle, Apostle Sylvester Davis Johnson in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. But, you know, my grandfather is gone. Bishop John Thomas Kerr, he's gone. Uh, Ralph, Reverend Ralph J. Boyd is gone. And then uh, my grandmother's gone. Evangelist Callie Kerr, she's gone. Uh, Bishop Otis Floyd, he's gone. You know, Reverend Charles Nix is gone, Reverend James Cleveland, so many of them. And then my brothers, both Craig brothers, Bishop Charles Craig, Bishop James Lindsey Craig, gone. My other music mentors, they're gone. Dr. Dorgan Needham, Donald, Reverend Donald Vales, Professor uh, 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 Kenneth Minor, and then uh, Professor Ray Daniels. I mean, so many. Oh, who I would call pioneers, John Everhart. I, down the music line, I can go, 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 and just call a continuous list of names and people that have impacted my life. But now here in ministry, uh, through this uh, Facebook ministry and uh, this outlet, it's been a blessing to me. And I know there's some negativity on there, people are getting on there fussing and cussing and fighting and showing and, and posting stuff they don't really need to be posting as too much information being posted sometime and and then of course you know the devil is going to do his thing you know we don't need to see pictures of this and pictures of that and all of that stuff you know that that don't need to be on facebook but as for me in my house you know that's all i'm saying and and i wanted to say that because uh i think we have within our uh, power uh, to make a balanced effort to uh, oppose the negativity that the church not be blamed for some of this stuff. No, we, we're not to blame for a lot of this stuff. So all, all I'm saying is uh, one of my purposes for being on here and highlighting ministries 
is to bring a balance to the negativity that's been highlighted where people are highlighting it for gain. You know that there are programs on here, uh, they wait for things to become public like scandals and gossip uh, so that they can talk about it. And they got nerve enough to be getting numbers. Who watching that stuff but, but, but a lot of the church people? Some of y'all like to hear mess and I don't understand that until it hits your house, then you ready to raise hell. Then you ready to go off and talk about everybody. But no, you can shut this stuff down by becoming a, a fire extinguisher instead of a, a, a coal that being thrown on the fire to keep it ignited. Stamp it out, get rid of it. Don't, if you stop listening, they'll stop calling you. If you stop listening to gossip and bad news, they'll write you off their list. And if you stop answering in the comment sections on these lives when stuff jump off, they'll stop making uh, uh, you a part of their conversation. You know, don't let people push your buttons. And again, back to my point, that's why uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it upon myself to do my part. Uh, I'm, you know, anybody know me? I don't just talk about it. I try to do something about it and network with the men and women of God across this country that I'm meeting, those that I've met. Uh, uh, just been such a blessing uh, to have this opportunity, even in music. You know, my program Spotlight on Music, I'm, I'm interviewing people that I don't necessarily personally know all of them, but uh, I'm following their ministry and figure that it's somebody that needs to be highlighted and uh, needs to be uh, applauded for their contribution uh, to gospel music or to their worship experience at their church. You know, they're holding it down. And so they never get an honorable mention. That's my point. Same way with pastors. They labor for years, 20, 30, 40 years, sacrifices of their family. They never get an honorable mention. They're not going to get, you know, a, a trumpet award. They're not going to get, you know, a humanitarian honor or, or some kind of de uh, degree, honorary degree from some college or something because they're working for the Lord. And sometimes you have to do that. You just have to go for what you know. And I, I certainly appreciate these ministry gifts that I've been introduced to in this last year or so. It has, I, I, I just want to testify, and it's just me, my own personal testimony, it has encouraged me to fight on. It has encouraged me to hold on, you know, watching them and listening to them, uh, interacting with them, having fellowship via Zoom and Facebook. Sometimes we have private meetings, but we're networking the kingdom and uh, it is a blessing. So that's all I'm saying. Blessing to your dad's my sweetheart, uh, Dr. Jeannie Connor Fontenot. Bless you for being there. Uh, and so uh, all I'm saying is we're launching out. This is the first day, no real formal announcement. Uh, nobody was prior to this time really contacted individually. I just put something on Facebook and say, hey, if y'all want to come on, holler at me. Let's get on and network. And uh, we're going to keep doing it and we're going to keep going. And uh, there's some that I'm going to reach out to and maybe we need to change for a better, more convenient day. Because when I looked at it, I thought about it. I said, oh my God, it's a lot of programs on tonight. You know, I myself at 10 o'clock got to join my prayer group uh, and I, I certainly want to bless the ministry gift of, of Keisha, Keisha Ward, Minister Keisha Ward, who does the press prayer ministry every Monday night at 10 p.m. What a blessing. What an intercessory group. What a, I'm telling you, we need all of this, whatever your ministry is. You know, we need you on the job. We need you on point doing what God has called you to do. And that ministry has grown and blossomed. And uh, I try to make all of the Monday night sessions at 10 p.m. because she gives a word and then she shares. And then earlier tonight, uh, newly elected bishop, and we still congratulate 
Bishop Richard L. Spalding on his elevation to the office of bishop and his, his wife, Pastor Anita C. Spalding, uh, where they do the new normal networking. And I've been guest on their program a couple of times. I interviewed them. And then just this past week, the Reverend, uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, J. L Lauren Russell out of the New York area, wonderful man of God, matters of faith, being a part of him, uh, his ministry, and then ministry in the law with Apostle uh, Marnie Lynn uh, out of, uh, well, she's in New York or no, in Pennsylvania and the Atlanta area. You know, just great ministry gifts that we've met. Evangelist Jackie Johnson here in the Detroit area and so many. And I had the opportunity to, to, uh, to interview a great man of God who I highly respect. He's retired now, but uh, Reverend Dr. Edward L. Branch, who shared with us on this platform, and uh, Mark Holloway, Pastor Mark Holloway, Networking the Kingdom, uh, Pastor uh, uh, Roger Carson, celebrating seven years of pastoral ministry in Toledo, Bishop Marjorie Hope, one of our pastors with the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA, and all of those pastors who've been a blessing to me uh, Mark Mark Ward, Zion Temple Baptist Church, and then we'll be highlighting uh, as we did uh, with other pastors. You got Pastor Benjamin Barnes uh, in his presence, uh, ministries worldwide. Uh, Pastor Mark Gray, Greater Greater Shiloh Baptist Baptist Church. We certainly thank God for him. Bishop Jeffrey Hatcher, Bible believing Baptist Church. Oh, such a blessing to the body of Christ. Pastor Angela Stallworth, Crown of Glory uh, Ministries uh, International. And, and then we've got uh, uh, Pastor John Holland, who's in the Phoenix, Arizona area, and his presence ministries worldwide there in that area, who's been a blessing to us. Pastor Bishop Gregory Simmons, Disciples of Christ Baptist Church. What a blessing. Bishop Leroy Bryant, oh my God, ambassadors for Christ right here in the, the Detroit area. And then Pastor Dwight Mahone, God's Grace Missionary Baptist Church. Listen, these great men of God, Bishop Eric F. Mitchell, uh, Greater Emmanuel Temple of Deliverance, all of these great pastors and ministries, uh, Pastor Michael Berry and uh, uh, his ministry, uh, fellowship Baptist Fellowship Institutional Ministries and so it's been a blessing and then this great man of God he's celebrating also again another shout out a happy anniversary, pastoral anniversary to Pastor J.D. White uh, Greater Olivet Baptist Church great man of God and, and these these are some of the pastors that, that we've had a chance to share with and so many others, uh, I mean, the list just goes on and on. And then coming up, Brother Ron Rucker, this Friday night from Japan, I'll be interviewing him on our program. And we talk about church and all of that. And then uh, again, Crystal, Apostle Crystal Lee this Saturday night on This Is My Story. All this is because of networking here on Facebook. And then uh, the one and only Reverend Dr. Tillis Jerome Chapman, who is a candidate now for the presidency of the National Baptist Convention USA. We'll be interviewing him on the 27th, right here on this platform, on This Is My Story on Bishop Andreas Wood's Facebook page. So all I'm, all I'm saying to you that I, I am so humbled and I feel blessed to have that opportunity. And of course, uh, uh, in the comments section, Jeannie, it seems like it's me and you tonight. Uh, the one and only Reverend Dr. Uh, Jeannie Fontanata and her husband, uh, Reverend Minister Dwight, Dr. Dwight Fontanata, uh, had the chance to interview them, power couples, on, on uh, uh, that particular program where they just shared their ministry story. 
and and uh, so many, so many that that I've had chance uh, to share with, and uh, it's been such a blessing. Uh, it's been a blessing and is a blessing, and so uh, I'm excited about what's going to happen. Uh, I'm making myself available, make some time on a monthly basis so that I can uh, avail myself to do more networking and make connections for others. Uh, I just, just made the announcement to a couple of my friends. I said, I'm getting ready to do something. So I need to hook you up with her and hook her up with him. And uh, we, we're networking. And so you, you, you're going to see programming in the future uh, with some people that we're going to be doing panel discussions. We're going to be doing uh, uh, interviews and we're going to be doing some teaching, some team ministry time. Uh, and it's going to be a blessing. Again, it's for the networking of the body of Christ. Again, Jesus prayed, Father, make them one as you and I are one. And so that is my purpose. That is my mission. And um, pray for us that God will get the glory out of all that we do and all that we're doing. And um, we've got some, some, some new pastors that have come on. I, I, I just want to make mention of them. And we're also remembering and praying for my brother in Christ, uh, Bishop Gregory uh, Foster Sr., such a blessing, and his son is now pastoring the church at Kadesh Baptist Church. And also, uh, I can't forget my brother, uh, Bishop Theodoric Ward at Christ Covenant Church, also a great influence and a great man of God who's doing some things uh, that's innovative in the body of Christ. And so we thank God for these relationships. And my brother down who's just relocated. We're keeping him lifted up in prayer, uh, who's down in Brunswick, Georgia, Reverend Dr. Julius Hope. We're praying for my brother as God continues. Uh, he's relocated him and ministry is, is being birthed. And we thank God for what he's doing. Amen. And of course, all of my friends across the country, Bishop John, uh, 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 John Lewis in the Atlanta area, blessings uh, to, to you, my friend and brother, and to uh, Bishop Anthony Board in Indianapolis, blessings to my brother there, and of course, Apostle William Payne, and we thank God for that ministry there, and then, of course, in Chicago, sweet Holy Spirit, uh, our bishop, everybody's bishop, Bishop Larry, Larry Trotter, we thank God. Uh, for his ministry and what he means to the body of Christ. And then here in our own city, of course, we've been definitely proud and excited about what God has done uh, here in Detroit. And uh, we, we certainly uh, honor and bless God for uh, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, who is now uh, the new head of the Churches of God in Christ. He's the presiding bishop, the chief apostle. We certainly thank God for him, his ministry. And uh, we bless God for Bishop Edgar L. Van, Second Ebenezer Church, and of course, Bishop Charles Ellis, Greater Grace Temple, the city of David. These, these are some great men of God. And, and I'm, I'm calling names tonight because my life has, has certainly been touched by them, the Reverend Lawrence J. London, uh, New Jerusalem Baptist Church. These, these people have been around my life all just about most of my life. And then before Bishop uh, Ellis was uh, a minister or even uh, a pastor, and then later on elevated the bishop, he played the drums for the Corlears. And uh, so many of them I remember uh, J. Drew Sheard, he was just Elder Sheard when he got his first church. And now look what God has done. Uh, he's uh, moved him to the top of the line 
and he's put his time in and his work. And I think about Bishop Edgar Van for years and years and years, Cadillac and Gothi, you know, uh, that, that was one of the spots we went to on Sundays, musicals and concerts and all the like. And so many that have been a blessing to this city uh, and, and to ministry and to those of us that, that have been around these ministries and churches for a long time. We know the history of some of these churches like uh, Holy Cross Baptist Church and uh, Mayflower Baptist Church, New Bethel Baptist Church, all of these churches that we would frequent. And of course, Greater New Mount Moriah Baptist Church, Little Rock, the historic Little Rock Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Jim Holly, we bless him, uh, who just retired and, and uh, enjoying the fruits of his labor. And, and there's just so many. I, I, I wanted to mention uh, some of those names because of how they have certainly, in, again, impacted my ministry and my life. I won't even go down memory lane in that list because I'm telling you, that, that's a whole another list. We'll be here for two days, you know. And uh, But I am going to do it. I am going to do it because here is my point. Uh, at some point, we thank God for those that have impacted our lives. And I say it like this, and I don't have no problem saying it. I don't care what folk think, what they say. I'm not worshiping the dead. No, I don't do that. But I'm honoring their memory. Because had not been for them, it wouldn't be no Andre Sonny Woods, no Bishop Woods, Sonny, whatever y'all want to call me. wouldn't be none of that. Had not been for those that, that took me by my hand and paved the way. So nine times out of 10, whenever you hear me, if I get a microphone and get time to talk, I'm going to always honor those that paved the way for me. I, how can I forget from whence I've come? And lest you forget from how you come, you didn't make it on your own. Somebody somewhere opened the door for you. And uh, we got to remember that, you know, just just remember that. And and so that's why I, I always make mention, even if I don't say anything like I'm doing now, you will you will see my post. I will be posting pictures uh, uh, from the past. I, I, I make comments about people that have gone on. And sometimes I do my Sunday praise. And I'll, I'll just always post old music, you know, from Rem James Cleveland, some of these choirs that I know from, from yesterday. Uh, this generation may not know them like I did Sunday. I posted uh, Philadelphia Mass Choir, you know, that old hymn, uh, Thou My Everlasting Portion, close to thee. And, and some of that good old church music so you might see me doing that, and you might see me mention some names, and I pull up some, some historical photos of the past and highlight their ministries because these are the people. These are the people. When I tell you, uh, as a boy, as a young man, these are the people that I, I listen to, and God so saw fit to bless my life uh, I had a chance to meet them in person and sit at their feet and learn. And that's what I'm doing now. That's why this networking is so important to me because I'm reaching out to those who've been where I got to go. I still got ministry life left and I haven't arrived yet. God is not through with me yet. God's not through with you yet. And so I need help. So I'm reaching out. And uh, what better way to do it, cut to the chase, right here on Facebook. I'll inbox them in a minute and say, hey, you blessed me today. We need to network. We need to, I need you. I want to interview you on my program. I want to introduce who I am. I want to meet you. You've got something that the world needs. And that's how we help one another. Don't be envious. Don't be jealous. Throw all that out the window because what God has for you is for you. And you can't get mine and I can't get yours. So let's let's just do that. All right, I'm done. 
I didn't in, intend to be on here this long, but I just wanted to make mention uh, and want you to look forward to some future uh, lives that we're going to sponsor. And uh, in that, we're going to leave the door open and we will post log on information for those that might just want to come on and say hello, God bless you, or be a blessing to the people of God and speak a word of encouragement. Or we just want to let the world see that we're not enemies. No, we want the world to see a united front. We want the world to see us working together, not just talking about it. Because, you know, the devil got that out now. You know, let, let, let me put that out there. He done already said that, you know, that preachers and musicians and singers and, oh, they can't come together. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it, you know, the big eyes and the little U's can't, can't unite. Well, in God, there is no big eyes and no little U's. You know, that's, that's in you. See, y'all be making up stuff to make, make, make it be divided. Y'all the one cause division among us. You know, with, with all that kind of talk, you speak in division. Stop saying that. Stop talking all of that stuff because that's not who we are. No, no, no. We are our brother's keepers. We, we help one another. We are helpers one to another, you know. And like the Bible say, how can you say you love God and you don't even like in your brother who you see daily? You know, y'all ain't speaking to each other. All that stuff, I let just drop it. Whatever happened, happened, and it probably didn't happen to you. You just listened to somebody else. All right. Networking the kingdom. Write that in your spirit. Write it in your mind. Write it on a sticky. Put it on your refrigerator. Put it at the top corner of your computer. Put it at the right corner if you're, if you're right-handed and left corner if you're left-handed. Put it on there and say, we, I'm going to be a part of networking the kingdom. You know, you don't have to be a pastor. You don't, you don't have to be all, you don't have to have all these credentials. We want to network the kingdom because the Ministry of Health, H-E-L-P-S, an acrostic, having enough loving people serving. H, having, huh? E, enough, L, loving, P, people, S, serving. That's what it means, the Ministry of Health. We want people to serve. And so we want to entreat them. We want to keep them encouraged and we want to bless them. Now we're getting back to in-person worship and I'm, I'm praying that every pastor, every church will be uh, certainly guarded by the angels of the Lord and we'll be protected where we can get back in and give God praise. You know, no, it may not be like we used to do it and uh, it won't be a whole lot of high-fiving and Touch your neighbor and all that. Thank God. I'm kind of glad of that myself. Well, yeah, I've been, you know, y'all, y'all was touching your neighbor every two minutes, you know, and uh, wasn't saying nothing, just touching your neighbor and running around the church. So thank God. We're back to real true ministry where we got to have something to say about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, y'all know I love you and I pray that you love me and uh, together. We're going to give the devil a black eye together. Uh, like the Bible say, one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight, and I'm crazy enough to believe it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I, it, I just believe it. And so since I ain't got no other option but to believe it, you know, y'all can't prove it won't happen. I'll wait. Okay, nobody said nothing. Okay, y'all can't prove that, that, that that's not true. So I'm just going to throw myself on the word of God and just walk by faith that as we touch and agree, great things will happen. You know, it takes two to produce. And so you and I together, we can produce ministry that will be meaningful, ministry that will be useful, uh, ministry that will, will, will touch the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls ministry that can be highlighted and ministry that will edify the people and glorify the father that's where we are blessings to you all tonight and uh, uh i pray 
that those of you that might hear this later, that you will consider locking in and uh, sharing with us because what we want to do, you know, you are important like anybody else to the body of Christ. And whatever it is ministry you have to offer, we certainly want to let the world know where you are and what you're doing in the kingdom. So we thank God for that. All right, I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you for this time and we ask your blessings now upon your people worldwide. All the ministry gifts, God, fivefold ministries, those who are in mission, those who are missionaries, those who are just witnesses for Christ. Thank you, God, for the privilege to serve with our gifts and our talents. And so we pray, God, that you will continue to bless all that we do as we honor your name, as we bless your name, as we serve you, God. We pray that you will get the glory in the master's name of Jesus. Now provide for your people whatsoever we need for the cause of ministry's sake. Provide for your ministry, God, in the name of Jesus. So I pray uh, the Psalms, Psalms 90 and 17, let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of thy hands upon us. Yea, the work of thy hands establish thy way. So Father, we ask that you will bless whatever uh, the ministry gives hands touch those who got vision for ministry and don't know how they're going to get provision. Thank you now in advance for provision for the vision that you've given to this man, to this woman of God. And we bless you now. Now, we pray God for Apostle, especially for Apostle Marnie, uh, who's going to South Africa, God, that we will uh, be a blessing to her that she'll be able to make that missionary journey safely and return back safely. Bless Bishop Holt, God, in her travels during her time of grief and her family in the matchless name of Jesus and all those that are, that are, are, are witnessing and experiencing grief in their families, God, the loss of loved ones. We pray your blessings upon them and we pray, God, for a worldwide ministry to break out, God, right here uh, out of Detroit, out of New York, out of California, out of every state in the union, all over the world, in every continent, in every country. God, we pray for a revitalization of your word. We pray for revival to break out with a fresh anointing that healings will take place, miraculous things will happen, miracles, and so enough conversion of souls. Men and women, boys and girls will be saved and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. So we thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Bless you. Thank you for joining in with us. Uh, bless you, Norma. I see you. And uh, Pastor, I got to call you because you got to be on my program. Pastor Elaine Gwynn, I've got to get you. So inbox me, Andre Sonny Woods, all of your information so I can contact you. I need to interview you on This Is My Story. Cause we go way back. I'm talking about way past that. We go back a few years. So thank God. I'm so good to glad to hear from you, woman of God, for chiming in. And um, of course, Dr. Dr. Fontenot, you will hear from me uh, probably tonight. Ain't no telling. If it don't get too late, I'm going to go into prayer time at 10. But uh, listen, um, I'm excited. I don't know if y'all can tell it, but God is doing a, a, a wonderful birthing in the earth realm. And you know what I'm excited about? I'm excited about seeing my brothers and sisters blessed. Did y'all hear what I said? I'm excited about what I'm witnessing. Some testimonies I received over the weekend for those in ministry who's been toiling in the valley of decision. You know, because this pandemic hit, hit churches big and small. I don't care where you were, whatever your economical status was, your membership, it hit everybody. It shut everybody down. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And so now here we are. But God is good. <laughs> and I pray that we've discerned the purpose of all of this and we're wiser and we're better, better for it and we can do more effective ministry. I'm really leaving because y'all know if y'all keep stirring me up, Stay out. Don't put another comment in the comment section. 
because I'm leaving. I'm cutting y'all off. I'm leaving. Bishop Andre Wood said, I love you and I command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. That is my prayer for you. If you got any questions, contact me. Just send me a hot, shoot me a line and I'll get back with you. Love you in Jesus' name.